Good evening. Thanks for joining us. Tonight, we know the President of the United States has no facts. No facts to back up his startling allegation that the former President of the United States, President Obama, wiretapped him in Trump Tower during the campaign. Keep it honest, we know this tonight because bipartisan members of the Senate Intelligence Committee say they've seen no evidence that President Obama ordered Donald Trump's phones tapped during the campaign. We know this because House Speaker Paul Ryan also says he's seen no evidence. Now, remember, the president asked Congress to investigate, and the House and Senate Intelligence Committees have been doing just that for the last dozen days. We know the president has no facts to back up his early morning Saturday tweet storm because in today's White House briefing, Press Secretary Sean Spicer read a long list of media reports that he seemed to believe back up the president's claims. Media reports. Sean Hannity, Judge Napolitano, Heat Street, The New York Times, the very paper the president of the United States has consistently referred to as failing and fake. Sean Hannity went on on Fox to say Judge Andrew Napolitano made the following statement. On November 11, 2016, days after the election, Heat Street reported January 19th, the New York Times reported. Well, you know, the president has no facts because he himself was on Fox News last night and finally explained where he got the alleged information that led him to tweet the unsubstantiated allegations against the former president. Watch. I've been reading about things. I read in, I think it was January 20th, a New York Times article where they were talking about wiretapping. Uh, there was an article, I think they used that exact term. Uh, I read other things. I watched your friend Brett Baer uh, the day previous where he was talking about uh, certain very complex sets of things happening and wiretapping. I said, wait a minute, there's a lot of wiretapping being talked about. I've been seeing a lot of things. The president on Fox last night, he's been seeing a lot of things, he says. He read a report in the New York Times. He heard Brett Baer say something. A lot of wiretapping being talked about, he says there. Now we know. The thing is, the report in the New York Times the president seems to be talking about, it does not say anything about President Obama ordering a wiretap. We've actually interviewed the New York Times reporter who wrote the article, and we're going to do it again tonight. In a minute, you can hear him for yourself. As for Brett Baer, whose work I certainly respect, based on Sean Spicer's comments today, we believe the president is referring to Brett's show on March 3rd, the night before the president tweeted. That show does not cite any evidence of wiretapping. Instead, it appears to refer to other unspecified reports, none of which, again, say anything about former President Obama wiretapping President Trump. Let's remember, before sending those tweets attacking the former president, President Trump could have picked up a phone. He could have called the FBI, the CIA, his director of national intelligence, could have just asked for the information. He didn't. There was something else the president said in that Fox interview that's similar to something he said before. In the world of television, it's what we call a tease. Listen. But wiretap covers a lot of different things. I think you're going to find some very interesting items coming to the forefront over the next two weeks. That's the tease. Basically, it's stay tuned because there's something very interesting coming up. Now, the president has done this before, most notably uh, as a citizen when he used to talk about President Obama's citizenship. Right now, I have some real doubts. I have people that actually have been studying it and they cannot believe what they're finding. You have people now down Absolutely. there searching, I mean, in Hawaii? Absolutely. And they cannot believe what they're finding. By the way, the payoff for that tease, that never came. In fact, there has never been any evidence at all that then Citizen Trump actually had people down in Hawaii searching for information. The time when he claimed he did, we actually did have people down in Hawaii searching for information, interviewing all the people somebody would interview for information, and none of those people we interviewed ever reported being approached by anyone working for then-citizen. Widely mentioned New York Times reporter of the night, uh, Matthew Rosenberg. Matthew, this reminds me of the scene in, in Annie Hall where two people are talking about Marshall McLuhan's work and Woody Allen gets annoyed and says, you know what, I just happen to have Marshall McLuhan right here. So we're very glad we happen to have the reporter who wrote the story that is being quoted now by Sean Spicer. I want to get your reaction to what, what we just heard. What do you make of the White House citing your article as part of the evidence? I mean, it's, it's, it's getting bizarre at this point because we've said it very clearly, and I said on your show, that that's not what the story said. Anybody can read the story and see that's not what it said. And so there's this bizarre circular thing happening where the president cites a theory that he was wiretapped, which developed on the kind of fringe right-wing media. And then after his tweet storm, Infowars then started saying, well, look, it was the New York Times that reported it, citing our story, misreading our story. And now, a few weeks later, the White House and the president are citing 
Infowars. So they've got one kind of bizarre right-wing fringe theory to defend another bizarre right-wing fringe theory, both of which there's no evidence to support. And, and just to be clear here, there is, is, and correct me if I'm wrong, there's absolutely nothing whatsoever in your reporting in the New York Times that indicates President Obama wiretapped or ordered wiretapping of then-candidate Trump, correct? N nothing. I mean, if we knew that, that is a fantastic story. That we would be rushing it. I would not be sitting here with you. I'd be at home writing it or out reporting it. We said that there were intercepted communications. Um, in subsequent reporting, we've said that these communications were Russians talking to each other about contacts with Trump associates. We know that, that there were intercepts with, say, the Russian ambassador, who was on the, phone, on the phone with Michael Flynn, the former national security advisor. And so Flynn was picked up because he was talking to the Russian ambassador, who's under surveillance. But this is all routine work by intelligence agencies and the FBI. This isn't, you know, they specially put the Trump people under surveillance. That's, we have no evidence that that happened. Right. I, in fact, I just want to, uh, to read the sentence in the article uh, that you've just talked about, but I just think it's important to actually have the sentence. You wrote, one official said in reports based on some of the wiretap communications had been provided to the White House. I, I know you can't obviously get into your sources for your reporting, but the wiretapping you reference, that's the Russians communicating uh, theoretically with other Russians, but in one case, I guess, with, with Flynn. Much of it. I, I need to be a little careful here, okay. partly because our visibility is limited, obviously. I don't have a security clearance. I can't go in and see these things personally. And, you know, that these intelligence reports then go to the White House isn't that unusual either, because in almost all of them, the names are masked. So if there's an American named in this, it's almost always masked. It's only unmasked if necessary for context or if, you know, the president were to ask for that. But we have no evidence that happened. Um, again, this is, you know, intelligence agencies doing their jobs, frankly. And, and picking up things that, that were going on. You're also working for a news organization that the President of the United States has repeatedly referred to as failing, or fake news. It's very interesting that the Times seemed to be one of the, 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 you know, the main White House sources that they are pointing to to try to now buoy their defense. They really believe it's fake news. It's odd that they were now be kind of embracing your reporting or what they I'm believe your reporting is, which it's not. It's kind of an honor, I guess, to be cited by the president, but it's a complete misreading. And, and Trump, he usually refers to us as failing, he usually sees us as something's wrong with us. On occasion, he once called us a national treasure. Uh, I think there's a, a, a bit of a um, competing viewpoint within his own mind about who exactly and what exactly we are. Um, I, I want to bring in Jim just back in. Jim, the president is scheduled to hold a, a joint press conference tomorrow with German uh, Chancellor Angela Merkel. A, do you foresee wiretapping coming up? And B, any idea of how he might respond? Uh, Anderson, I think this is going to be a critical moment for President Trump in the early days of this administration. You know, we saw in some of these joint news conferences with other foreign leaders uh, that he preferred to call on conservative news outlets uh, to basically uh, fix the game in order to get tough questions during some of these news conferences. And so the choice that is set before the president tomorrow is, does he go down that road? Does he decide to just stick with conservative news outlets because he knows they're not going to ask this question about wiretapping? Or does he call on a CNN or New York Times or Associated Press or one of the other broadcast networks and so on? And is he going to get asked this question? And then how does he answer? I think that is going to be a critical moment for this president. We'll have to see if he chooses the road less traveled here because uh, he is certainly in a very uh, difficult box of his own making. Uh, and I think the only way he can see his way out of it at this point, Anderson, is just to acknowledge the truth that the wiretapping claim that he tweeted about is just false and that he made a mistake.